So let's continue our discussion on carbocation stability and regioselectivity of our addition reactions. So let's recall what a polar bond is. So a polar bond is formed between two atoms that have different electronegativity values. In other words, as an example, let's consider the carbon fluorine atom. So fluorine is the most electronegative atom, and it's more electronegative than carbon, and that means the protons found in the nucleus of the fluorine will pull electrons strongly, more stronger than the carbon, and this will shift our electron density towards our fluorine, creating a partial negative charge on the fluorine and a partial positive charge on the carbon. So this difference in charges, in partial charges, will create a dipole moment pointing from the plus to the minus. Likewise, if we look at this example, we have our electronegative atom, the oxygen, attached to an H and a carbon. So our oxygen is more electronegative than both this H and this carbon, and that means we will have a partial negative charge on the oxygen and two partial positive charges, one on the carbon and one on the H. And we'll have two dipole moments, one going this way and one going this way. So once again, polar bonds are formed between atoms when there's a difference in electronegativity between those atoms. The more electronegative atom pulls electrons closer to itself, creating a partial negative charge on that more electronegative atom and a partial positive charge on the other adjacent atom. So in this case, we had the partial negative on the fluorine and a partial negative on the oxygen. So, how will polar bonds come into play when we talk about hydrohalogenation reactions? So let's look at the following addition reaction in which we have an asymmetrical alkene reacts with an HCl molecule. So notice that two pathways can be taken. The first pathway will lead to the following carbocation A and the second pathway will lead to a second, a different carbocation, let's call it B. So in the first case, what happens is this pair of electrons in the pi bond grabs this H atom displacing this pair of electrons and the H atom is placed onto this carbon. The same exact thing happens for this carbocation, but now this H atom, instead of going onto this carbon, it attaches to this carbon, forming a carbocation intermediate with a positive charge on this carbon. So in product A, an intermediate A, we have a plus charge, a full plus charge on this carbon and in product B, intermediate B, we have our full charge on the second carbon. Now, which one of these is more stable? The answer lies in an examination of the charge distribution. So let's recall what a polar bond is and let's apply that to these two molecules. So where do we have a very polar bond in these two molecules? Well, notice in both cases, we have our bromine attached to our carbon. And bromine is much more electronegative than carbon, so that means we will have a polar bond between bromine and carbon in both of these cases. Because bromine is more electronegative, we'll have a partial negative on the bromine and a partial positive on the carbon. So that means our partial positive will be here and negative will be here. Now, in intermediate A, notice that our two of the same charges, a full positive charge and a partial positive charge, are relatively far away. But in this case, our two charges that have the same exact uh, sign, so a plus and a plus, are adjacent to one another. And recall that whenever we have two plus charges or two negative charges next to one another, we'll have electrostatic repulsion according to Coulomb's law. So this will create electrostatic repulsion destabilizing our product. So this will be less stable than this because of this electrostatic effect. Once again, in this intermediate, in intermediate A, the full positive charge is as far away from the partial positive charge, leading to less electrostatic repulsion. On the other hand, 
Here, in our intermediate B, however, the two charges are adjacent, leading to high electrostatic repulsion, which destabilizes our intermediate B. Now, this destabilizing effect that led to the preferential formation of intermediate A is known as the inductive effect. So this is known as the inductive effect of this polar bond. And we conclude that the more stabilized intermediate A will be preferred in the formation of this intermediate. So the pathway taken will lead to product A and not product B because of this inductive effect. So let's compare the inductive effect with resonance stabilization. These two concepts are both very important and usually go hand in hand. They compete with one another. And let's see exactly what that means by examining the following example. So let's suppose we have another alkene, asymmetrical alkene, and once again we have our hydrohalogenation addition reaction in which this pair of electrons takes the H atom and places it on this carbon because of the set reasons before. So if we place the H atom on this side, well, we're not going to have any resonance stabilization, and that means the H will go on this side. So we form the following two intermediates. So notice we have two different effects going on. We have an inductive effect, and we have resonance stabilization. Our resonance stabilization is seen by the following uh, diagram. We have two different Lewis structures, two different electronic configurations of our single intermediate. So in this case, we have a plus charge on this carbon, and in this case, we have no charge on the carbon and a plus charge on the oxygen. But notice we also have an inductive effect. The inductive effect will pull our electrons closer to the oxygen from this carbon, creating a higher, a slightly higher positive charge. So the inductive effect will destabilize this, but at the same time, this will be stabilized by resonance stabilization. So these two concepts, these two ideas compete with one another. When this acts to destabilize it, this acts to stabilize it. Now, generally speaking, resonant often competes with our inductive effect. In this case, resonance stabilizes much more than induction destabilizes. And so, we have this carbocation formation even though we have a slightly more positive carbon because, the, because of this inductive effect that pulls uh, our electrons closer to this oxygen, creating a larger positive charge.